EGF. Have you seen this in serums or in new creams or moisturizers? EGF stands for epidermal growth factor, which is a big fancy word that we're gonna break down. We're gonna explore what the claims are that cosmetic companies are making, and then we're gonna explore the science and see if this ingredient can actually help you turn back time and rejuvenate your skin, or if it's a lot of marketing hype. So first off, what is it supposed to do? When you think of epidermis, you think of the skin. Remember that the epidermis is referring to the top layers of the skin, and that can be further broken down. But it's this idea that by adding growth factor, specifically targeted to skin cells, either fibroblasts or the skin cells within the epidermis and the dermis to create more collagen, that you can therefore stimulate collagen, smooth the skin, get rid of fine lines and wrinkles, a lot of claims were made um, for anti-aging, but also for brown spots, such as pigmentation. And there has actually been scientific proof showing that epidermal growth factor is really helpful in wound healing. But to understand how that works and if it translates to skin care, let's break down the science a little bit more. Growth factors have been heavily studied when it comes to medicine, but not so heavily studied when it comes to skincare or when it comes to the cosmetic industry. And when it comes to medicine and science, growth factors are a way that your body communicates. These growth factors are proteins and they go around and they help instruct your body what to do. And some can be very broad and work on the entire body and some can be very specific and only work uh, in very targeted ways. Some examples you may have heard of are something like IGF-1. IGF-1 stands for insulin growth factor one. So it's a growth factor. And uh, IGF-1 is more discussed when it comes to health and nutrition. There's also vascular endothelial growth factor. Um, when you think of endothelial cells or vascular, think of veins when it comes to not just your skin, but all throughout your body. The one that we're really interested in is EGF. And the reason that this is so interesting is because it's supposed to produce collagen. Now, with inside the body, it does do this. There have been studies that show an epidermal growth factor is taken out and actually put on cells uh, in a scientific, non-human setting, that it can actually help those cells regenerate. Again, cells naturally grow in our skin, but as we age, that turnover gets a little bit slower. And especially if the skin is damaged or gets a wound or there's scar tissue there, the skin doesn't always function the way it once did, or if someone has eczema or psoriasis or one of these skin conditions that prevents the skin from functioning normally. So a lot of cosmetic companies saw these scientific reports, saw how this growth factor really can cause cells to turn over quicker, saw that they were regenerating, which is a process called mitosis, and they said, holy crap, that might work on skin. And again, if it actually works, this is amazing. It means helping our skin regenerate itself naturally. And for someone who's struggling with scarring or pretty much any issue that's being caused by dysregulation of the skin, this sounds really promising. So a lot of cosmetic companies are now putting this epidermal growth factor in products. But unfortunately, they're going to charge you $110 for like a 1.5 ounce bottle. So a big pretty penny. And then the question becomes, does it even work? And to understand that, let's get back to the skin. We have to understand the structure of the skin and how molecules penetrate. Just because epidermal growth factor or VGF or any of these other growth factors work from inside the skin out, doesn't mean that they'll always work from the outside in. So the question then becomes, will this even penetrate the skin and get to where it needs to go? We have to understand where cells are created. Remember I spoke about the structure of the skin. The top is the epidermis, the bottom is the dermis, and these can be broken down even further. We have videos that go in depth on this, but the place that I really want you to look at here is this basal membrane, the stratum basal or stratum basale. This is exactly where your cells of your skin are produced and regrow. This thin little layer is where that cell division actually starts and then it gets pushed up through these other layers until it hits the very top, uh, the stratum corneum, where they kind of slough off into the air. And by the time they're at the top and they've been pushed through all these little layers, they've actually been squished, they have excreted their intercellular matrices, and they're actually dead at the very top. So when growth factor is applied to the top of the skin, what does it do? Does it sink in and penetrate immediately? Unfortunately not. When you think about how small particles have to be to get in between the individual skin cells and down into your skin, 
these are pretty big. So it's unlikely that a lot of them are going to be able to get through. Unfortunately, it would seem like most of these tend to sit on top of the skin. Now, if they're only sitting on top of the skin, there is a positive to that because these can act as humectants, meaning they grab onto and draw in moisture from the air or the skin or the products around them. This is really great for people who have barrier function issues, um, which could be eczema, psoriasis, dryness, anyone who's struggling with something like that, because this creates this nice almost second skin or film on the skin that can protect. And remember, this is supposed to help regenerate cells. It's not really getting to the layer that it needs to do that. Now, you might say, well, is it regenerating the cells that are at the very top? I want you to remember that the bulk of the stratum corneum is dead. It's dead skin. So it's really not causing this mitosis, this cellular division to happen. Now, there can be some cells, or if you have exfoliated before using this, there is a chance that it can get deeper. And this is where it's really exciting. If you can get through all the layers of the epidermis and actually get down to like the stratum spinosum or even the stratum granulosum, there might be something that can be done here. Again, remember that in the body, this stuff naturally works on fibroblasts, specific cells in your skin, to create more collagen. And that is great. But if we can't get it there, it's not gonna be super promising. So you might think to yourself, okay, cool, I could just exfoliate my skin before using them, or I could do some microneedling and have a dermatologist or somebody else apply them. Well, here's the other problem. This EGF, this epidermal growth factor in particular, is a polar molecule. Polar meaning that it has two different charges. Unfortunately, that means that it has difficulty getting through the skin. I have seen products that combine growth factor with specific ingredients, such as phospholipids. Um, this particular skincare product does that. Phospholipids are what our cells are made up of. We have phospholipid bilayers. And so it's this idea that if you combine them, the phospholipids will help like penetrate through the skin. It's possible, but we haven't truly seen studies of it going on in real humans. And remember that even if these phospholipids are able to get through or some carrier molecules are included, the percent that would actually be able to penetrate would theoretically be very, very small. Um, and on top of that, the specific epidermal growth factor, I think I read it was 53 amino acids long. And most of that is going to be sitting on the outside of the skin. Now this is great for hydration. This is great for compromised barriers your function. Um, this is really great to create that second skin. So this can be very, very helpful for people. But knowing that, I want you to ask yourself, is that worth spending $110 on? <laughs> the other thing we have to talk about are the specific studies that are done in the cosmetic industry and also cancer. So again, growth factors have been studied extensively in humans and they are used in medicine. There have been scientific papers proving that applying growth factor to a wound while healing speeds that up super, super quick, helps with less scarring um, and overall skin barrier restoration. Now, you have to remember, a wound is literally an open lesion in the skin. So of course the growth factor is going to get where it needs to go. But on skin that is not uh, literally punctured or wounded, is it really going to do that much? Now, when it comes to this cosmetic application, there have been a couple of studies done. But unfortunately, when it came to the studies that I read, every single one was conducted by either the cosmetic company themselves or someone associated with the cosmetic company or the parent cosmetic company who has a financial benefit from proving that these do work. So again, this doesn't mean that they don't work. It just means that they have not been independently scientifically proven to do so. And again, I want you to remember that growth factors come in different forms. Plants have growth factors, humans have growth factors, and animals have growth factors. But just because a growth factor works in a plant doesn't mean that it's going to have uh, the same impact on a human. And depending on the growth factor that you're getting, labels don't actually list the source of their growth factors or where they're getting theirs. I also wanna to touch on cancer because this is going on to the skin. And as we know, some people may have skin cancers or moles or skin tags or lesions. And the question becomes if this helps to quote unquote regrow different cells, is it doing this for cancerous cells, which of course could be a negative thing to have happen. I do wanna make the distinction that growth factors are not mutogenic, meaning they do not and will not cause cancer. However, they are mitogenic, meaning that they cause the proliferation of specific cells. And this could be a cancer cell. 
we just don't know. There have been some professionals that have looked at this and said, nope, not even causing cancer cells to start proliferating, don't even worry about it. Um, but for me, knowing that certain people might have certain issues, I would want this to be tested a little bit more. And then if you do have a mole, or if you do have a skin flap or a strange lesion, you might wanna avoid it. Um, if you do have an open wound, initially, if this was pure growth factor, I would say like, go ahead, put it on, that's great. But the truth is that a lot of cosmetic companies are putting other ingredients in here that would not be good for wounds, such as disodium EDTA um, or a couple of other natural ingredients, quote unquote, that you normally find in skincare, but that would not be good for the uh, introduction to a wounded area. So again, if you have a doctor or someone in the hospital, a, a licensed professional who says, we're gonna put some growth factor on your skin, you say, hell yeah, in a Jenna Marbles voice, hell yeah, sign me up. But if you're just buying some skincare and you fell down and scraped your knee because you were jumping off a rock into the ocean, <laughs> you don't want to apply this skincare to that open wound. And again, I also want you to look at the price. Uh, a lot of these creams are like a hundred bucks or more. And if they really worked, if they actually caused fibroblasts to create more collagen and certain cells deep within the skin to reproduce, hell yes, take my money, suck me dry. <laughs> but the truth is that the science has not proven that. Now, for me, the science does look promising. So do I really wanna wait around for someone to prove this when I could be using it now and seeing benefits? The truth is that if you start to use one of these products and you see something good happen, you feel that your skin is plumper or your barrier function is improved, keep using it. There don't seem to be any big negative side effects, so I wouldn't be concerned. And again, I don't wanna to have to wait forever for someone to confirm that it's right, and then I'm like, oh, could have used that to clear up my acne scars a few years earlier. But at the same time, I'm not willing to pay $110 for something that might not actually work. Um, so you wanna find things that are within your budget. This specific one, I will have to do an independent review on each ingredient. This one I think is only $14, but also this is from a plant-derived source. It is still the epidermal growth factor, so it is the correct one that we would want to use. Um, but it also has some ingredients in there that kind of back and forth on. So have you seen any of these and what is the biggest question that you still have that is unanswered? If you want more skin science, there's a couple of videos here. And if you're really interested in scars or anti-aging, there's a video you should watch here. Always remember to be useful inside and out and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. <laughs> Love you guys, bye.